before I understand Taiwanese. So, um, I'm really honored to be here because um, Zhang Jun has been, I don't want to use pastor. <laughs> She's been asking me to come to speak uh, in Boston for a while, but uh, because of scheduling issues and et cetera, I, I only just uh, kind of, uh, okay, I'm coming in October and the weather is actually lovely. So um, unfortunately, this is the time that everyone will want to fall asleep. So I'll try my best to entertain everyone for the next hour. Um, so that was very easy to pick my uh, English name. And thanks to my parents. So I want to tell you, today I want to share with you, this was me when I was uh, graduating from uh, elementary school. And I don't think it really looks that much like me. I think I get all the weight. <laughs> so um, this was um, me last year uh, in Cincinnati. So I want to tell you kind of the story between these um, years. Lots of people don't know what I do. I'm a radiologist. So radiologists, what do they do? Do they take x-rays? Are they really doctors? Uh, yes, we went through medical school just like the other doctors. We spent a lot of time in the dark, unfortunately, but um, we actually have more break time than the other doctors, so we go out to the sun during lunchtime, so it's not that bad. And um, <laughs> our job is to interpret uh, x-rays, ultrasound, CT, you name it, basically pictures. We turn pictures into words, into diagnosis for the other doctors. So typically we don't have much dealing directly with patients. We work behind the scene and we communicate with other doctors. And it's a fun job. I thought of becoming a neurologist when I was in medical school, or maybe a pediatrician. So in the end, I ended up being a pediatric neuroradiologist. So that's quite so specialized. Um, Jiajin already mentioned I was deciding whether I wanted to come here to um, Harvard to take up a fellowship job. But Cincinnati Children's Hospital, especially the radiology department, is just so remarkable. I initially was going to do six months of fellowship there starting at the beginning of last year. And I spent two months there. I was overwhelmed at how nice the people were and what sort of work they did. So I decided I turned down the offer um, at um, Harvard Medical School a Fellowship in Nuclear Medicine and stayed on. And I will be staying in Cincinnati for another 12 years at least. So Cincinnati, someone asked me today, where is Cincinnati? <laughs> so it's uh, in Ohio. I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's not like Boston, New York, uh, LA, but um, I, I'm mainly there because of the hospital. So um, I want to uh, tell you from when I graduated from elementary school in Taiwan, my whole family migrated to New Zealand. So uh, everyone knows New Zealand is a uh, small country of a uh, uh, very small population, but the size is seven times, the land mass is seven times the size of uh, Taiwan. And the, the population is like one, less than one seventh of Taiwan. It's a beautiful country. So people think of New Zealand, they think of sheep. Iwan, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there are many more sheep than people there. So uh, it's a very nice country with great scenery. Everyone knows uh, Lord of the Rings was filmed there. And this is a glacier. Um, just to compare how big, this, this is the size of people. So the size of the mouse is how big the people are, and it's really pretty. So I encourage you, if you have a chance, go and visit New Zealand. Mm -hmm. I spent four and a half years there studying high school. And um, I traveled very little when I was in high school. But I decided to take a trip later on. All these photos are my own photos. I like to take photos and photography. Too bad I didn't bring uh, my SLR this weekend because the leaves are really, really pretty outside in Boston. Okay, so. When did it start? I think sometimes some things don't have a defining moment. You go, oh, I met this guy, I fell in love straight away. It wasn't like that. So my work with Taiwan kind of began insidiously. 
But I think it began when I was a high school student. I represented New Zealand. Uh, every country can send six students to compete in the International Mathematics Olympiad. Um, this was like the Olympic Games for nerds. <laughs> oh well, for uh, young mathematicians. It was fun and um, I got an honorable mention the first year in 97. So there I was, I met the Chinese Taipei team. So I said, oh hi, I'm, I'm from Taiwan too. So um, I walk out in the Kaigang and Gong Wei. Walk on, Guai. Why is your tag Chinese Taipei, not Taiwan? Because I was naive at the time, you know, I was young. So they said, oh well, mm, we don't know. Is that what they call us? So they're like, these kids are like 15, 17, 18, that age. And I said, well, if you can't jump, people want to call you Michael. Aren't you annoyed? Then why do you just accept this as the matter of fact? So that time I started thinking, this is, um, okay, so um, I started thinking what uh, it means. So the next year, in 98, the competition was in Taipei. So I was thinking, wow, this is good. Now we can be called Taiwan, right? Mm -mm. They were still called Chinese Taipei. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh uh, yeah, oh, even though we were the hosting country, we were the Zuban Guo, we could still not use our name because, because that's the way it is. So I'm like, huh, all right, is there anything we can do to change that? So that seed kind of, kind of got planted in my mind. I thought, this is not fair. Why does Taiwan have to go through this, not like other countries? There are so many other countries smaller than Taiwan, poorer than Taiwan, yet they can use that name, but not Taiwan. Then after I graduated from high school, I got into medical school in Sydney, in Australia. Um, our medical school is like the Taiwanese system. It's uh, six years after high school. So people think of Australia, what do they think of? <laughs> so no, we d I did not have kangaroos in my backyard, but my friends who live in Adelaide, they do. They have like kangaroos jumping around and then uh, on the side of the road on highways, like deers you have here, we have kangaroos there. Uh, I don't like kangaroo meat, it's kind of tough. And <laughs> so Sydney is beautiful. I lived there for over 12, 12, 12 years. So this is the opera house and the bridge. The weather is always beautiful, it never snows, and it never rains, no. <laughs> it rains sometimes. They have beautiful beaches. This is a beach that um, only 15 minute walk from uh, where I used to live as a resident. So they have um, pretty birds, and this is a hospital I was seconded to as an intern. So we have to, we are based at one big hospital, but we go to little hospitals uh, around the, um, the, the main hospital. So this, these are cover tools and they come when the patients have afternoon tea time. They have biscuits and they, we call them biscuits, we call them cookies here. Uh, so they have cookies and then uh, the birds actually come and ask for these cookies. They look, they pretend, they look some gold tree, you know, they try to pretend they're very really cute and try to get cookies of you. So I went there, I took my camera and started thinking, oh yeah, this is cool. And in the backdrop is the is Sydney Harbor, you can see many sails. So this was me when I graduated from medical school. Uh, this is kind of going backwards, so I'm in Cincinnati now. This is my second year of fellowship. Last, uh, before that I was in Sydney, do my radiology residency training. Uh, before that, I did a part-time um, master's in public health while I was working full-time uh, as a resident. And um, I got my degree from the University of New South Wales, which was uh, located in Sydney. During this time, I was involved in the Taiwanese community. I'm currently the president of the Taiwanese Association of Cincinnati. People go, oh, say <laughs> hi, <laughs> <laughs> So it's like, uh, it's kind of uh, interesting how uh, you just kind of uh, get, land up in a position a little bit unexpectedly, and you just take it So <laughs> and do, do something good. So uh, before I have been the vice president of the Taiwanese Association um, of Australia and then a board member before that. So I'll share with you some of uh, these experiences. 
So it's kind of this summary slide. I started out in Taiwan, so Taiwanese. I moved to New Zealand. It's just, it's pretty. It doesn't sound very good in uh, Mandarin. Tiny or really. It's stupid. Okay, but I don't know. Um, then I moved to Australia. Oh, it's even worse. Tiny or really. It's like, oh, what? It's terrible. Then um, I am not American yet, but I am in, in America, so it sounds much better. So all of you here are lucky. You get called a uh, beautiful people. Tiny <laughs> man. But what I haven't forgotten is I've left Taiwan for left. I've lived outside of Taiwan more than I've lived in Taiwan. But Taiwan is always in my heart, and um, that's why I do a lot of things I do. So um, I want to share a song with you that um, I learned about a month ago, and um, Wei Yu. It's by Wei Yu, and I know lots of you know this song. So I want to uh, sing together, and so you don't fall asleep. <laughs> and um, this is such a nice song. It moved me, and I would like to kind of uh, advertise this song when I go to Cincinnati and during my travel, so people can sing this uh, song. Yeah. Only one
So as you all know, there's a big campaign for Senate in Massachusetts against uh, Senator Brown versus Elizabeth Warren. And we invited both campaigns. We've actually reached out to both campaigns. We uh, met with Senator uh, Brown's office and uh, Elizabeth Warren's office was very nice enough to uh, speak with me by telephone. And we invited both campaigns to come today to speak to us. Uh, Senator Brown was not able to make it, uh, but uh, um, Ms. Brown's uh, office uh, very um, gladly, or, or excuse me, very nicely consented to, to come and visit us today. So uh, she has a very limited schedule, so we're just gonna take a quick break. <laughs> and uh, Michelle Wu is here. Uh, she was very nice uh, to talk with me. And uh, when she called me back, I said, um, you know, are you familiar with Taiwan? She said, well, my parents were born in Taipei. So uh, I guess she's familiar with Taiwan. But she's the uh, political and constituency group outreach person uh, from Ms. Warren's campaign. She's gonna speak to us very briefly tonight. Michelle? So let's put it in another way. I found out subsequently what happened. 
So Chu Xingzhe was the health minister at the time. He told me, well, he was writing letters every week to the WHO <coughs> to say, can we have some help? We don't have any information. All the information Taiwan he got was from the website. So I'm like, wow, that's pretty bad. But contrasting another country, Singapore. Uh, <laughs> that's a very tiny country with a very small population. So what happened was Singapore did not have any case of SARS, yet WHO sent seven personnel to help them to set up prevention. In Taiwan, there were already many cases and people died of SARS, yet WHO said, oh, we can't, China said, we can't. And then so what happened was uh, the CDC, actually the uh, Center for Disease Control in the US actually sent two people to help Taiwan. But that kind of just kind of hit me and go, what? It is not fair. So this, uh, so this uh, action association is um, what we decided to form. And um, it's shortened to EWA. So EWA sounds like EWA. And because health is related to life, OK, well, I'm stretching it a little bit far. But you know, um, that's, that's the idea, EWA EISU. So it means that uh, you will, you will, people will uh, live OK, in Taiwanese. So um, this logo was designed by my younger brother, and that's W with Australia, H with Taiwan, and this is meant to be a globe, but we have, I, I, I told him, can I have a globe? He said, well, then you can't read the full Taiwan part. So this is what we came up with. So what did we actually do? At that time, we didn't have Facebook, so we had uh, websites. And um, we started a website and asking people to uh, send emails to their friends to uh, send, sign some petitions. Then we also did some paper petitions. So when the Taiwanese Association had some activities, we give out the, to these to the people and say, oh, uh, please sign this. And we designed some brochures because a lot of Australians didn't know much about Taiwan, didn't know much about the World Health Organization. So this is... Uh, the cover of the brochure. And um, does anyone know this bridge? You probably can't really see it. It's usually red, okay? It's So, Guandu means Du Guo Zhe Nan Guan. So, that was why we designed this brochure and used uh, this bridge to overcome the difficulties. Um, then, that's the inside of the brochure. And then um, we wrote some songs because uh, I like music. And uh, it's, it's kind of fun to have a group of people singing. Then I'm like, I'm not as uh, good musician as uh, uh, Wei Yu. So <laughs> I'm like, well, let's just grab some songs and feel, change the lyrics a bit. So we, we kind of uh, change two songs. This one is Nong Chun Chi Nong Chun Ke, the melody. And this one is um, a, a hymn called um, uh, Near to Thee. And um, so I thought I'll share with you one of these songs. It's very easy, it's very short, and it's kind of fun. And what I found later is you can substitute all these words for different things. So we changed to uh, like then hako, and then you can, you know, whatever you want to put in there, but um, share it with you.
then the, uh, when we go out, we sing. So um, that's what <coughs> we kind of uh, found this song kind of to be cute. And everyone, uh, a lot of Taiwanese, especially the older generation, know the melody. So what else did we do besides getting petitions? I thought, well, Papa uh, was my role model. They were um, advocating for Taiwan in the Congress and the Senate. In Australia, we're not as lucky. So we don't have these organizations. Our Taiwanese association are the main associations. We don't have a kind of a, a Congress orientated um, organization. So I thought, okay, I took my took the matter in my own hands. What can I do as a medical student with no money? <laughs> I wrote letters to uh, people who I think may be able to help. So. Um, this is Barry O'Farrell. I lived with, in his constituent, I would say constituent in his uh, uh, area. So he, at the time, was the health, the shadow health minister of New South Wales. Uh, they were not in power because um, the Liberal Party at the time was in opposition. However, he was very friendly and he wrote back to me. So he is now the premier because um, they won the election uh, last year. So. I want to tell you a story about this letter. I wrote a lot of emails at a time because email is cheap and you don't have to find the actual physical address. So I wrote to all the WHO uh, representatives around the world. That was like 100 emails. Then I thought I'll write a letter to the Western Pacific Regional Director. So Taiwan and Australia, they're both in this region, in his jurisdiction. So I said, well, as a medical student, I think you should consider, uh, because of SARS and the infectious diseases have no borders. So Taiwan really needs help. And um, one day, I sent this letter and I forgot about it. One day, I got a call from the dean's office. Uh -oh, what did I do? I am in trouble. <laughs> and then, so they said, oh yeah, this is mail for you. And I realized I forgot to put the return address on the letter I wrote to him. And, but because he actually really wanted to reply to me, he wrote to my medical school. So I was really impressed because he not only read my letter, he actually took the effort to reply to me without a return address. So the moral of the story is please remember to write a return address if you ever could write someone important. People always thought, oh, well, this kid is a bit uh. <laughs> So yeah, so he actually wrote a pretty favorable reply. And um, he's Japanese, by the way. And I've also got a few letters from, uh, I also wrote some UN letters later on and um, replies from various people. This, he was a leader, John Brockton was a leader of the opposition party at the time and he also replied to me. I wrote uh, to Brendan Nelson, he was the um, health, shadow health minister at the time and he became the party leader at one point too. So uh, former um, foreign minister for, um, for Australia, Alexander Downer, he is he has a more kind of close to China view, yet he replied to my letter as well. So uh, this is the current uh, party lead, uh, Liberal Party leader in Australia. He may become the prime minister one day if he uh, he gets elected. So uh, we actually organized a visit to his office because it was in uh, in Sydney, in Manly, where you saw those birds, the cockatoos. That's where his electorate was. So we went there and then we sat down and. <laughs> The first thing he said, oh, so why are you here? We said, oh, we would like to uh, let you know Taiwan wants to be a member of the WHO. He said, oh, is Taiwan not a member of WHO? <laughs> so we were like, okay, great, that's a good start. We got to let him know um, this is what we're asking for. And a lot of people, I'm sure many Americans may not know that. And um, it's just so remote for them. So that's how you want to make it closer to heart and to the, them understand there are many Taiwanese here, people travel. So it doesn't matter whether you're Taiwanese or not. When there's a virus, it doesn't care. So that uh, was a learning point for me that how little people may know about Taiwan. And um, this was our former prime minister, John Howard, and his office also wrote back a reply. So what I learned from that was, oh, people actually read what I write. And um, the other thing I learned was, 
don't write the same letter, use the same letter to everyone, okay? So do some background research on each people and then write specific things that are relevant to them. So I had a different letter for, of course some of the things could be the same, but the, to keep in mind you have to make it relevant for them. Uh, because uh, I, t I gave this talk four, five years ago and Tu Xingzhou was in the university, he said, Oh, no matter what, I'm going to do it again. He wrote the same letter to everyone and no one cared. So he, um, he said, oh yeah, that's a good idea. So um, keep that in mind if you're ever writing letters to uh, people. So one other thing I did back in 2004 was I joined the Liberal Party in Australia. <coughs> Why did I do that? Well, you think, oh, does that mean if Labour Party by the way, the Liberal Party is the right-wing party, so um, the uh, Labour Party is the left-wing party in Australia, just to kind of let you know it's different, because people think Liberal is left. So they were very anti-communist, so they were more sympathize, there were more people who sympathized with uh, Taiwan and friendlier to Taiwan. So that's why I chose to join this party. and. Um, one day, uh, my I, my local branch president said, "Well, um, we hear you hear we hear you talking about Taiwan. What can we do for Taiwan as a branch? Can do you have a something we can do?" And I said, "Okay, let's draft a policy and um, let's see what, if we can pass it in the um, our every month we have a council and things get debated um, at that." Uh, council. So um, the, it was like the Young Liberal Movement of Australia calls upon the Australian government to take steps to assist Taiwan to become a member of the WHO. So um, to, in order to prepare for this, because not everything goes through the uh, gets has to be voted and debated on. So I wrote a I went overboard. I wrote a five page uh, policy <laughs> explaining why. But um, I think this just shows people the effort that um, we wanted, we put in as a, as a branch and as a group, and um, there were people against it. They said, has that So there were people like that. But then um, I, I, I can tell you what I did. So I walked down the hallway, it was a meeting room like this. I went from the back, I sprayed perfume across the room. I said, can you smell that? I said, I said, okay, if that was a SARS virus, you are not going to be alive for the next little while. So they were all like, uh, okay, okay, you were not kidding, you were kidding. So I think that was kind of um, a, and a, uh, I wanted to get people's attention. And this policy actually got debated on, but it got passed. So uh, I'm happy that this is a formal policy of the Young Liberal Party. So uh, how did this start? Um, let me see. I went to school in Taipei, so this is my school book. So what it says for people who don't read, it says, be a kind of a happy student. I don't know how to translate it better. Maybe Jiajun or Herbert can help me. So it says, uh, be a good student. So, And the other side, it says, please be a good Chinese. So well, hmm, that's interesting. So uh, unfortunately, when I grew up, um, I was not taught to be a Taiwanese, and uh, the school did not teach me to do what I did. And I found a lot of people don't care and are very cold, especially like my classmates and people of my generation. And I'm glad I'm at 50, I belong to the young generation. <laughs> so a lot of people still have the white terror problem overhanging their heads, their parents like, Oh uh, yeah, don't talk politics. When you go to school, be a good student. Don't say if you are good side, you, you will vote for, etc. So that was in the 90s. And um, schools have, um, most of the teachers were, they obey what the government tell them to, to teach the students. And the media, I, this is not a typo, this is what I, I think they are like most. <laughs> <laughs> so long, long term, people get brainwashed. And this is a problem because people think it's shameful to speak Taiwanese. People say, oh yeah, like a young girl like you, why do you speak Taiwanese in public? In Taipei, this is like, my, my people, 
pretty girls like my friends, they, they wouldn't speak Taiwanese. They said, oh yeah, it's not. Because what they see on TV shows is people who are, have lower and so, social economic class, so it's really bad. And this is an example from a textbook. My, my mom actually kept all the for, for my siblings. And then she was like, well, maybe I shouldn't teach this to them. <laughs> so they said, oh, which song is your favorite out of the three? They're, they're kind of song or um, kind of poems. And they are all Chinese poems. And I wrote in highlighters, how to sit. This is when I was fifth grade. I said, I hate, I don't, none of above. I did not like any of those songs because they were Chinese. <laughs> so <laughs> you can see I was not a good student and I was not a, I was not Chinese, so <laughs> this is the other page. I can't remember which grade it came from, but what was uh, white out in there is the flag of the Republic of China, and <laughs> under there is the uh, white, uh, the map of China with Taiwan there. And I wrote, um, "This is not ours," and I white it out, and I said, "This is the country. This is my country." So I didn't know any of this. I didn't remember. So luckily, my parents kept all the evidence for me to keep so that I can tell you the story from this day. So I did not learn any of this from the textbook. Actually, I, on the contrary, the textbooks told me otherwise. My parents told me, you are what you think. So will influence what you think and what you talk about will influence uh, your actions. So they said, oh, well, Taiwan and China are separate. And um, because of the situation, although we ethnically may be um, Chinese, but we are Taiwanese, OK? So like people may be Caucasians, but they are not all British. They are not all Dutch, OK? So this is something that I learned from an early stage. As a child, <coughs> child meaning I think I was 12, at that time, uh, Lin Santian Jiao had a Tui Bao Zhou Taiwan. Uh, we don't read uh, Lian He Bao. It's a newspaper, it's really blue. And there's like really yellow stickers, orangey stickers with uh, really black markings. So, like really bold prints. I had a stack of this. I went to school. I started giving them to my friends. So, uh, that's what I did. My parents didn't really tell me to do that. They said, oh, yeah, there are stickers you want to share with your friends. So that's what I did. And at that time, um, Taipei had a Li Wei Shenqi. And I was telling my friends, oh, you should tell your parents to vote for Chen Shui Bie, Xie Changting, and Lin Zhuoshui. And now I regret asking people to vote for Lin Zhuoshui. But yeah, at the time, that's what I did. And um, after we moved to New Zealand, I helped their Taiwanese association to edit their magazine. So this was when I was about 14, 15, and my dad said, oh, you type much faster, and um, you know how to put things where they need to be. So this uh, was a print that, um, a book that I'm quite proud of because um, I actually helped my uh, parents at the Taiwanese Association to make. So you know, kids are kind of useful too. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this is an example I want to show you what not to do and what to do when you are doing publications, okay? This was much later on when I was a uh, Taiwanese Association board member. So when you first see this, do you think it's Taiwanese? No, I feel it's Chinese. For all the Caucasians out there who are not familiar with Taiwanese culture, they think, oh, this is very Chinese, this lantern and um, tanger up there. So this was the... Uh, Borsha we used the year before I was the board member. So the next year I said, why don't you decide something? I said, oh, okay, I didn't study interior design, I did not study art. All right, in the top page of So I designed a uh, poster. So this is a poster for the same event the next year. I got Taiwan there. Okay, so people may not know Taiwan, but this is definitely doesn't look that Chinese looking, right? And I had to find a lantern that uh, doesn't look that Chinese. And that was the year of the chicken, I think. Yeah, so there's a chicken there. And there's a yeah, And then there's a kangaroo there. So Taiwan, bye bye. <laughs> that made it relevant for the Australians. And uh, I made it really colorful, so there's really not one particular color that stood that. I mean, this is not the best thing there is, but uh, it's just that some of the little points that 
I sort of to do. So this was a photo from the actual uh, parade. Parade. This I was the um, MC during that ceremony, and um, this is this was our uh, 会长科会长的 time. We invited. Uh, uh, there were lots of kids. There were thousands of kids involved in the parade. And this was our member of Wallaby, from Wallaby, Gladys Berjiklian. She was impressed. She said, "Well, you're the only one who could pronounce my name in the Taiwanese community." <laughs> She's a、uh, uh, yeah Armenian, and、uh, she's very supportive for Taiwan. And、um, a few other things I did or say、uh, as the vice president was、um, I invited mainstream. Politicians or young aspiring politicians to the Taiwanese、uh, gatherings. So at the time, it was not very common to do that in Australia. So Noel McCoy, he was a quite poor poor, is a lawyer. He cries like Jody Nahian, and、um, this is not me. She doesn't really look like me. She's my little sister. Okay, and every time I use this, she says. Big disclaimer. Can you tell them I don't look that ugly anymore? Okay, so I said okay, fine. So she's she's a she's a radiology doctor in Australia as well. And、um, this was when she was still a high school student, I think. No, she was a medical student at the time.、Uh, we held seminars for high school students, like Michelle was saying. People want to get into med school, get into dental school, right? That's what the Taiwanese parents want their kids to be, or engineers. So in Australia, you have to go through interviews like here, and so we kind of had a seminar for students who wanted to do that. And during that, we kind of talk about Taiwan and、um, uh, share some other things. So I think I learned a lot from doing these communities of work. I felt. From the beginning, remember in the International Olympiad, I felt it was so unfair. How come Taiwan was not treated right? And the problem stems from the Republic of China. I mean, is it really a country? Is it not? I won't go into the details, but this was the problem. And、um, what I learned from the World Health Organization, the way Taiwan was treated during the time of SARS. And what I learned even more recently, so the World Quiet Games was held in Cincinnati、um, in July this year, and、uh, we had a lot of dealings with the、um, World Cup Quiet Games. So we had two teams, two choirs from Taiwan. One of the teams, their names like yeah, they're from Taiwan, province of China. So we had about we had over we had almost a hundred、uh, volunteers from the Taiwanese community. They were lots. They were like forty Chinese choirs. You know, there were more of them. But the problem was, we as volunteers we were really upset. So we started complaining, and we went to them and said, "Look, we already said at this upfront that we've been dealing with them for over a year. We use the Olympic Convention. They are called Chinese Taipei. I mean, it's not our ideal name, but there's no way we're going to accept province of China." So that's what we did. We were really kind of firm about it, and they apologized. They said, "I'm sorry, there was a computer glitch, and they used the wrong <laughs> database for the country names." So they quickly corrected it. But you know, if no one said anything, it will be province of China on the paper on the program for people to see. So、uh, this is just like lots of things. You never <laughs> anything can go wrong, and、uh, lots of things can be unfair to Taiwan. So. I want to share with a lot of young people here. You are really lucky. When I was much younger, internet was kind of in its infancy. But now you can find almost anything you want on your iPhone or your Android, and you don't have to be confined to what the media tells you. I learned from other countries, so、uh, we know how、uh, a lot of Jewish people who care about Israel, and one of them was a friend from medical school. She went finished medical school, and she said. I'm going back to Israel to do military training. And we're like, wow! So after six years of medical school, you want to go back to Israel to stop your training when everyone else will kind of go ahead and say, "This is very important to me and to my family. Israel is very important." So that's something that I learned to heart. And what、um, I, I, we all know that Korean communities are kind of very strong. And one of the stories I heard was one of the Koreans. Uh, was selling blacks in New Zealand, 
And there's a very small Korean community. So one day, a customer walked into the Korean lamp shop, and he said, give me all the lamps that it's hard to sell. He's like, what? He's like, all the stuff that you have overstocked and all that. He said, it's because he wants to help his Korean friend, friend or compatriot. They're not even friends. They're just some random Korean. Because they, he wants to help him to have the business keep going because it's a Korean lamp shop. I was like, wow, I don't really know other people who would do that. And um, of course, I learned a lot about New Zealand, Australia, and USA, how people love their country. So I uh, know a lot of uh, Taiwanese Americans who never lived in, a, in Taiwan for a long time may find it difficult to understand what the fuss is all about, like their parents tell them about Taiwan. There are a few books that uh, I would recommend for people who want to, uh, in English. So these are some of the books. Of course, um, there are some news uh, blogs and all that. And I'm really, really envious of uh, Taiwanese Americans. You have so many organizations to choose from. And a lot of these have young people as uh, branch to uh, be involved in. So I think what can, this is more for the young people, what can I do? I think it's very important to be a leader in your own field, whatever profession you are in. So if I was someone cleaning the street, well, it's not like they are, that they are like,